video beached whales <laughs> and you can win massive clients. <laughs> it was so shit. <laughs> oh, thanks, um, mate. Uh, I'm just going to teach you how to do stuff on Twitter. <laughs> We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. In this epic sales and marketing focus two-parter, we're going to be talking through exactly how our business wins new business, how Dan videoing a beached whale helped us win a new client, and we will not be eating at our desk to avoid any vermin. That is a very strange intro if you haven't listened to the last episode, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely the vermin bit. Mm. Um, I mean, the whale bit, no one's going to understand. No, but well, not yet. Once not they listen yet, now. no. But they know, they know what we're like. Some, some funny stories Breaking. amongst the uh, value-adding business information. Mm. But I, I feel actually this episode, so this part one, by the way, listeners, we're going to be talking a lot about marketing, which is, which is actually what we do. But it's not going to be shit. Yeah, it's always good to start a podcast <laughs> letting the, the viewers and the listeners know uh, no, but you know, it's not going to be shit. Our podcast, we don't want to be though. You know this traditional step-by-step podcast? Here's how you set up a marketing mm. ad. We're not like that. Are you saying every other business podcast is shit? Then? No, no, no. I mean, we like to take a different approach <laughs> where we give value, but we also yeah, you know, make it a bit entertaining. I guess what we're trying to say is uh, a few of the previous episodes you, you could have listened to and forget it was a business podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I think we did for certain parts. <laughs> yeah. But actually this one... Um, but you say that, but um, this is going to be like more of an insight into how we win business and value adding. Mm. But there's also going to be some really interesting examples <laughs> and stories. Why are you laughing at me? I'm laughing because I feel like we're starting the podcast with a debate about what it's going to be like. <laughs> I, I'm saying it's actually going to be really valuable. And you're saying, well, well, there's going to be a bit of that, but there's, <laughs> it's going to be really interesting and funny too. And I was like, yes, but it's going to be valuable for business people. It's going to be the best of both worlds, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. So, first of all, Dan, mm. um, you know, as as we've discussed, I like just talking about stories like <laughs> me being dressed as an Al- as Aladdin and falling through uh, women's toilet windows. <laughs> yeah. and so, why are we t- so heavily talking about marketing? Well, I I I actually took the time to look back at some of our podcast reviews to try and because lots of the best listeners actually leave a review. The shit ones don't, but the the really really great <laughs> listeners leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and the, the ones we really respect. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, they, yeah. And actually, no, that people have re- really go in and leave paragraphs of of reviews, and it's really good for us to learn from it to think what do they actually think is good and what do they. Yeah. Well, there's not that much negative stuff because. But you can still from from the positive stuff, you yeah. can see patterns of th- things that people have mentioned yeah. that they've enjoyed yeah. or found useful so far. And a lot of the themes I was seeing was like we've got good banter ofs, <laughs> um, oh, <great. laughs> and bants. No, but we the, the way that we share insight that people can learn from. But at the same time, we've got, actually got good. We talk about stuff that like a lot of businessy people wouldn't share because they don't want to come across as as bellens basically and yeah. we don't care we luckily know that we are <laughs> yeah, yeah um i think to even use the word bellend on a business podcast <laughs> you've got to understand that oh, you are one dad's gonna tell me off for saying that sorry dad um but yeah no we 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 looked at that so so this we kind of thought like how could we provide loads of value and also share some interesting stories at the same time and i mean marketing is is what we do lloyd mm. so um, sharing some insights into how we yeah. get some 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 fairly big brands to work with us could mm. be helpful for other other people. I, I do think as well. There's some really small changes that don't get me wrong. It took took us ages to work out what those small changes had to be, but there are a number of quite small things that we've implemented that have had a huge mm. effect on us marketing and as a business. our business and selling stuff yeah um and, and get more income it's funny looking you know like you always look back on reflection at the things you were doing sort of a year ago or two years ago and ha- you look at them now and think that was awful yeah. that was so terrible and even now mm. you know we we're, we're going to be giving advice in this podcast but we've still got a huge way to go you know yeah. we're constantly learning and um a really good podcast i'm listening to at the moment if you run a marketing company or agency it's agency phonics um, and you listen to these these people who have run like 300, 500 people agencies and they're doing an incredibly good job and you learn mm. so much. Um, 
But we're still tri- striving for that, aren't we? Yeah, and I think um, I think we've spoken about this in a video before. Um, about f- at first, I I always used to look back at our old video and our old content and our old website and things we've done over the last six years as a business, and I always felt you know it's quite cringy and I thought oh god that's that's really not as good as I want it to be yeah and then I realized that is a good thing yeah because if you're we, we're constantly improving and mm. trying to make things better so of course you're going to look back 12 months and think that's not as good as I want it to be mm. because you've improved for 12 months yeah I think if if you ever get to a, or if we ever get to a stage well, where that thing we did two years ago was yeah, much was better brilliant. than what we're doing Be- now. <laughs> yeah exactly if you're thinking that was the highlight of what we've done so far in the business it's like, <laughs> well what have you been doing the last two <laughs> yeah. years because if that's better yeah. so um but it's having that hunger to constantly be better yeah and i'm looking forward to listening to this podcast in year time and years time and cringing <laughs> yeah. and, and thinking why the hell were we doing that yeah um Okay, but who, who, so Dan, who, obviously anyone can listen to this and be thoroughly entertained, <laughs> but the the value adding marketing and sales information, who's it going to be useful for? Um, so if you're in a marketing team, if you run a business, but also for, for a wider audience, just working for a company, you know, you should have a, mar- if, if you want the company to succeed and you want to progress in that company, you should have your marketing hat on and you should be thinking um, with a, I actually randomly just before this book on this podcast we've just released a new sketch where we a funny sketch about marketing meetings and Richard you know Richard who won the competition a while like, ago like Bob like Guru, Richard Guru yeah. he's probably listening now yeah he he did a really interesting comment about um the, the old company used to work for really quick story Lloyd yeah. the old company used to work for um a big conference like hundreds of people there and the the CEO asked the room who here is in marketing for our business and like 10 people put their hand at the marketing team and then he was like you're all wrong every one of you is in marketing because you're mm. constantly you, you've all got to work together to help promote the business you know every yeah. person you speak to is a marketing or sales opportunity to put your best foot forward so this podcast is just relevant for everyone really animals so, so basically a really broad audience that could could mean we have loads of listeners <laughs> yeah oh, okay so it's not niche and specific where we'd only get well, a few actually, listeners it is niche and specific for the marketing people listening but for the broader audience it's not niche ah, and specific okay <laughs> Um, and just to confirm, there was a bit of debate at the start of the episode, Dan. Mm. Um, will there be funny stories amongst the really valuable stuff about us being shit at various things in life and that kind of thing? Yeah, we'll throw a few of those okay, in as well. Good. I was concerned there at the start. Some of your friends that listen, Lloyd, probably don't care about the businessy stuff. They just want to hear stories of you and me being stupid. Yes. So we've got those coming. Don't worry, guys. Great. Okay. Um, so moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, marketing. <laughs> yeah. What the is marketing so marketing in layman's terms is um attracting an audience to take a certain action so attracting your your ideal audience making them aware of who you're who you are and what you do and driving consideration for them to take the actions you want them to take well that was you you almost sound like a marketing influencer that knows what you're talking about then (laughs) keynote speak well just google it mate virtual keynote speaker (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's not going very well (laughs) (laughs) keynote speaker um (laughs) no but mark yeah it's it's just attracting like you know every business needs to sell their products or services Um, how do you how do you do that you mm. get in front of the people who have a need or a demand for your product and then you convince them to buy it Mm. because i was just going to say is so is marketing uh relevant to every single business like is is it just as relevant to a business with a thousand employees as uh someone working on their own good question i'd say it's not so relevant for businesses like apple because apple is just part of culture like they they, they've built such a brand that they don't need to put a tv ad on they're just so integrated into human culture that oh i'm getting a you don't say i'm getting a smartphone you say oh i'm getting an iphone because What's that? I didn't, I didn't say that when I got my Google Pixel. <laughs> yeah, I know you like to be different. <laughs> um, but what's that? Ah, oh, this is gonna be annoying. There's a word where, like, it is it synonymous? Where you you know, like, sellotape is called mm. sellotape, and the brand sellotape. When yeah. you think of a product, you say the the brand name. People There's, call a is it synonymous? A, a Hoover, a Hoover, rather than a vacuum cleaner in the UK. Yes, a lot, and that's a brand. Yeah. 
I can't think of the word. If you know the word, it might be. I'm, I'm not of. sure either. I'd like to sound intelligent and confirm or deny <laughs> that that's the right word. I think it is. Yeah. Um, Lauren behind but the camera is probably more intelligent and knows, uh, but we don't. No. Um, okay. So, but I, I was going to say your your example about Apple. I would say that the only reason that they're in that position is because of their brilliant yeah. marketing in the past. Mm. Like you said, they're now such a, you know, like like sellotape being good at marketing in the past. We mm. now call it sellotape, not a uh, sticky adhesive tape. <laughs> Can you pick up some sticky adhesive tape from the shop, darling? I feel like uh, your radio voice coming on for a, a radio ad for some sellotape, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit of a... Uh, I, um, I actually don't feel like that <laughs> today. Um, weird how we've got different feelings. Um <laughs> No, but you're right. You're right. So, so yes, Apple obviously had to market their, you know, they, they, they've used some interesting channels. Like, I don't know if you've seen their, uh, when you look back every year, they obviously not this year because of COVID-19, but they do this sort of launch event where Mm. they, it's a huge PR event thing where they, they announce new software. Have Mm. you seen the old videos, what they used to do there? I mean, they're such geeks, the people that were, they're announcing it, but they, they were like, um, and then they say they, they act as if it's all over like they've announced all the features and they're like but now there's a smartphone that you can play music on and then the whole crowd are like Whoa, oh my God, yeah. like if you haven't seen yeah. what we're talking about just google also looking back Apple at the events. old ones are really funny because they get hugely excited about <laughs> features yeah. that are just it has an arc lead yeah yeah you can listen to music on your phone <laughs> yeah. and it's like the crowd are like yeah. screaming crying because yeah. they're so excited god like the next generation are going to be looking back at those videos thinking why yeah. are they so excited about do you this remember thing? do you remember this is random but do you did you ever you did you have a cd player right like a, a what's the like a, a cd player where you take it around with you uh, yeah like a discman <laughs> yeah yeah but there was different ones wasn't did and someone in my year had um was it like an was it a mini not a mini cassette Mi- mini disc player mini disc player do you remember those yeah my my friend Johnny had a mini disc player and they and were so cool. He thought he was so ahead of the. <laughs> and then then about six months later, MP3 players came out and they were just completely. You could hold three songs on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely off topic. Yeah. That's anyway, so marketing. Yeah. Um, I do think, um, especially for smaller businesses or just businesses that don't have an effective marketing strategy, mm. um. I think just saying, oh, you should be doing better marketing. It's like, where the hell do you even <laughs> yeah. start with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah we should. Dude. But <laughs> yeah. how, like, is there a, a like a kind of simplistic way mm. to start thinking about yeah. marketing? I think yeah, there is, and a lot of a lot of smaller businesses with marketing, they just know they need to do it, so they they just think of random stuff like. Oh, marketing, that means leaflets. Let's get some leaflets. And oh, it means social media. Let's set up a social media program. Do social media. Do social media. Quick, get on that, get get on on that face. Twitter. Get on that face chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Linked on. Um, so, so that's the approach a lot. You know, there's no strategy involved. Mm. So to take it to the next level, which is, which is how we support brands and work with them to, to do better stuff, is to actually have a strategic model that you use, a strategic marketing model to to make the right decisions, to choose the right actions that are going to give you the, the best return on whatever you invest in it. And the, the the really simplistic sort of approach we take is to look at the customer who you want to target, who who is that person, and then start to understand the journey they go on from um, being a normal person, not knowing you, like, oh, I don't know you. Oh, I'll play that part. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. To to having a problem. Go on. Oh, I um, I'm. It's really annoying me that I can't walk out and about uh, and listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. So so that so you've got a problem. Um, to then to then thinking. Uh, or what's the approach they take to find a solution? Hmm. Are you gonna? Act oh, that out? I wonder <laughs> if I should look on the internet or maybe go into a retail store or ask some (laughs) friends about what they would recommend so understanding that decision making process and how that works and basically mapping out that process and understanding you know just like Lloyd was explaining that person might go on the internet to find a solution and and the, the the way we support brands and the way you should be thinking is what do I need to do on the internet to get in front of those people searching for the, ar- the answers to their problems mm. or if they're going into a retail store maybe you need to, re- to be the retail store maybe mm. you know you need to be open up a retail store in your local town mm. 
So it's thinking of that journey and then mapping the actions that you need to take as a business to get in front of those people, to attract them, convince them and convert them. And we mm. use this, I'm not gonna go into loads of boring detail. I will go into some detail, but I don't wanna bore people, but we use this traditional marketing funnel model, which is a, a, a model that represents a journey the person goes on that I just spoke about. Mm. In, in, in the really basic version, and there's three stages, awareness, consideration, purchase. Awareness, make them aware of you. So, uh, Lloyd looking on Google for solutions to answer, uh, uh, to be able to play music and um, us having a website yeah. or whatever. M musicrus.com. Yeah. Oh, I'm aware that they exist. Consideration. So what is Lloyd doing to decide what's the best solution to his problem? So he may be looking at reviews on YouTube. So maybe as a business, you need to be creating reviews or reaching out to YouTubers to create reviews of your products, mm. to actually purchasing it. You know, what does Lloyd need to happen to nudge him to make take that final purchase? Mm. That's a very logical way of looking yeah. at it, is it not, Lloyd? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Did I explain that well, or is that? Yeah, I think so. I think the, the the part in the middle, the consideration, is really interesting, and the part that a lot of businesses completely miss. They understand that you have to do something to get in front of people, so they have the, the awareness. And shout at people. I think that's quite obvious. It's like, yeah. look, you can buy stuff from me. I'm here, yeah, yeah. and and I do good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then then a lot of people do the the purchase stage, and and to be honest, that's the main thing people do that that doesn't buy work it, go on buy my, Bu go buy on. my stuff buy my stuff now but yeah. they haven't done the other stuff yeah. to make but the consideration in the middle that's the part that i think a lot of businesses yeah. miss out it's actually so people are aware of you mm. but they're in the process of deciding shall i buy mm. this shall i buy that shall what i buy from this this yeah. shop shall i buy from this website and it's um it's getting in front of mm. them and in their thought process how do you convince them yeah a lot of a lot of people think advertising is like an advert in a newspaper. An advert mm. in a newspaper is a bit of creative that says, "Hey, we sell bits of paper. They're twenty quid. Buy one." You know, mm. that's an advert. But what that isn't is it's not anything that's going to really convince you. Mm. Um, you know, there, there's lots of ways you can use now to 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 help convince that person. Think think psychologically. Mm. What's their decision making process? That's why the like we're talking about marketing and business just doing something like oh we need to do something on facebook or oh we need to get leaflets printed that is a, a tactic but mm. you're probably only achieving one of those things so either awareness you might have a be delivering leaflets and um by the way i know, I know we're a digital business but there are some businesses where leaflets mm. will be a good thing to do and like a, a local window cleaner perhaps yeah i don't know that if you know yeah yeah per perhaps then <laughs> um but yeah, those leaflets might get awareness. So you could put them through people's door. Maybe it's a low percentage, but 3% of people will look at it and and for the first time be aware that your mm. business exists. It could be uh, the purchase side. So people in your local area could know that you exist and you have a leaflet with some kind of deal or offer, offer on yeah, that. that makes them take action and buy. So, mm. so they could achieve something like that. A singular mm. marketing event mm -hmm. could achieve something like that, but it's not... You need all of those things to actually... You need actually a fully rounded strategy. Um, mm. And that's why it's so important. The first, in terms of like a practical takeaway from this, that first step is to really sit down and think about who are your ideal customers that you want to reach and then map, um, map the actions you need to take at each of those stages to attract, convince and convert them. Mm. Yeah, all those stages, if you can imagine yourself... Uh, buying your product and all the things mm. you do to try and work out uh, where you could find it what one you want to buy who you want to buy from and along that process you can get in front of that customer all the way through that process but it's choosing where you can do that how and that's the that's the complicated bit i'd say um it's choosing what to do yeah but it's because because at first it's like yeah do this good stuff awareness consideration purchase it's like mm. yeah i get that okay that makes logical sense mm. and it's kind of like but how the hell do I choose what I'm going to do? Because there's millions of things. and Yeah. Hmm. Do you want me to answer that now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, th this is the big, big question. You know, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, do, you know, develop this strategy where you look at how to attract, convince and convert them. But understanding, you know, should they make a podcast? Should they do a video? Should they do leaflets? Is, is one of the most difficult decision there's a few there's a few things to think about to answer this question All right so firstly one of the the real key things to answer is where are your customers you know like like we mentioned leaflets like think about your customers if your customers are like 70 to 80 year old pensioners 
they're probably not gonna be on social media. So using social media as a channel probably isn't gonna be most effective. But what they do do is they read everything that goes through their letterbox because they love, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, I love reading leaflets. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that leaflets may be the best option. So think mm. about your customers, who they are, and where they will be consuming information. Mm. That That's one, one of the angles. Secondly, like what skills do you have? Because, you know, we we I fall into this trap before of, of telling everyone build a personal brand create videos and start to get on video and just because that's how we've done it mm. but we're um we're comfortable doing that we like being on camera we like some people would absolutely hate the idea of that they might be better writing or mm. or talking you know creating a podcast yeah. or so think about the skills you have and thirdly the resources you have so if you're a business you know a brand with lots of money to invest and a big know widely skilled team you could be doing lots of different things mm. whereas if you're a one-man band you know you have a certain amount of time and money to invest it might be better to go all in on like facebook or facebook ads or yeah. i think it's really relevant what you said about um and i think a lot of people in marketing you know, in our kind of world do this they they look at what has worked for their business or their kind of niche clients they have and they tell the world that is the way to do it mm. And like Dan said, we've fallen into the trap of that earlier in our business, saying this is the best You've way to, to do, do it this, yeah. because it's worked really well for our business. But I think now with a wider understanding, mm. it's every business is different. So this is how we do it. This works for our sort of business mm. with our skills, with the, the aud- audience that we want to mm. connect with and the services that we're selling. Um, but there might be completely different ways that work mm. for you. But if um, if people do want to do the hunk, Oh, I can't even talk. Great podcast. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the kind of video content stuff that we do mm. and get in front of because that's that's the awareness stuff we do. A lot of it is that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know there's different things we do. Um, I want to just uh, give you the confidence that um, when we started doing it, uh, well, actually, I say we. It was definitely just Dan. <laughs> when Dan starting started doing it. Um, it was so shit. <laughs> oh, thanks, um, mate. Because <laughs> you, you might be looking at this brilliantly edited podcast on YouTube or listening to it thinking, God, that sounds professional. I could never do that. Um, and yeah, I just want to let you know, everyone starts out being shit and it doesn't matter. Dan's, Dan's videos, right? I'm sure he didn't have a microphone. He just recorded it on a potato because it used to be, oh, hello, Dan. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to teach you how to do stuff on Twitter. <laughs> and... um. Oh man, they were so bad. And he 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 seemed so he didn't s- s- look confident or sound confident. He was kind of whispering because he was so unsure of what he was saying. <laughs> uh, if you want to find customers on Twitter, then maybe you do this. <laughs> and um, gasping for breath because I was so nervous. Yeah. yeah, and I think, and and thinking about that as well, mm. um, giving other people confidence to start because they're not going to be perfect. It's, mm. It is the journey. We had um, a big brand that we've worked with. Um, and really was a, a game changer winning that business mm. uh, two or three years ago, um, was watching Dan's videos when he was that shit. When I was recording the audio on a potato. Yeah. And <laughs> and I think that, and one of the videos he, he recorded, which persuaded this guy to work with us somehow, and Dan did a few <laughs> videos on Twitter like this, oh yeah, this really good Twitter stuff. <laughs> and then there was a beached whale. Uh, <laughs> wait, of, wait, sorry, this just sounds so weird when you explain it. Yeah because it is it makes no sense at all <laughs> so you, you, you can even go on our YouTube channel I think it's still there sort it by <laughs> oldest videos or something you get like two or three videos about building your audience on Twitter and getting customers on Twitter and then suddenly there's just a video of a beached whale <laughs> basically there's a beached whale on Botany Bay near where we live and then um, and Dan thought it's perfect piece of content for my, my business audience I'm just going to post that and um oh. But yeah, my, my point is, so this, <laughs> this, this decision maker in a large business that has something like 600 employees, I think, mm. that we, we work with, um, was watching at that point. We, this was we, like six, five years ago. Yeah, we had no idea he was watching. But two years after that, when we weren't shit at doing that sort of stuff, <laughs> he contacted us, wanted to work with us, and complete game changer for our business mm. and great client. So what I'm trying to say is, um, don't worry about looking at videos and thinking, oh, that's not perfect. That's not how mm. I want it to be. People can watch it and, and see your journey. Mm. And uh, whenever they're ready, if they're a smaller business with a smaller budget, earlier on in that 
journey they're gonna mm. be like oh I, I might want to work with these guys but yeah you can basically video beach files yeah that would be <laughs> my <laughs> number that, one that's the clear message I'm getting the from clear, you. <laughs> yeah the clear message um, from me absolutely rambling <laughs> is video beached whales <laughs> and you can win massive clients <laughs> Okay. No, but just to add a bit more context to your story, because that was actually a really good story. Well, it's a good story, but I just rambled and didn't really say much. <laughs> no. So um, no, but we asked we asked that social media manager from that large client who we worked with eventually, and um, we asked him like what how he discovered us, and he 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 told us he watched our shit videos that of beach whales and we were really rubbish. But he also told us, oh, and that made me discover the weekly blogs you were writing. Um, and I also, Dan, saw you speak at an event. And actually, I met Lloyd at a networking event once a year ago. So, and he was brilliant. Yeah, he didn't say that. But there's all these, the interesting takeaways, there's all these touch points, marketing touch points that where this decision maker for us that changed our business over two years had been watching us, seeing what we're doing, and we'd impacted him and, and p- produced the right content and done the right things to, to drive consideration that we could help him. And then eventually, at one point, we nudged him at the bottom. You know, like I mentioned that model. Mm. You know, we drove awareness. We built consideration. We actually got him to to get in touch, and then we started doing projects yeah. with the big brand. Yeah. So, it all yeah. worked. So I think we need to be a a bit clearer on. We've spoken about the big picture. We've spoken about working out where your audience are and starting to do those things. But I think for a lot of businesses, and especially small businesses, there's still so many things. So if you, if we're thinking, where, who are my audience? You know, oh, 40-year-old males. Mm. So those people are on Facebook. Mm. They're on Instagram. Uh, they might be on LinkedIn. Mm. They might also read magazines. They might listen to podcasts. So I think still there's a huge amount of stuff that <laughs> a business could do to get in front of them. Yeah. So I, I want to kind of really narrow down how how do people go through a process of, Okay, I've got all this. My audience are They're in all those places, um, but I've got me and mm. uh, one other full-time member of mm. staff, so a team of two. We don't have loads of time, loads mm. of money. What do we focus on? So the first thing I'd really do is hire Knowlton to support you and come up with a strategy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, this podcast episode <laughs> was just a massive advert. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, the first, the first thing is is to do with those three pillars again that I mentioned before. Mm. You really need to understand where your audience are and you know you might be thinking, all right, how do I do that? Do your research. You know, what a practical thing you can do, look at your previous customers that you've converted. Look at wherever you've got the data or the, that information. If it's in an mm. Excel spreadsheet or a CRM system, whatever, look, at, look back at those customers and think, how did they discover me? How did they, where were they, you know, did they discover me through a leaflet or through an advert on a social, on Facebook or through an event, you know, look and analyze those. Um, other ways, you know, Google, you can, it's very easy. Google has the answers to everything. You can Google where do 40 year olds go or where do they, 30 year olds go to, you know, to consume information, start mm. to Google and do research and actually invest time in it. Um, and even like asking your previous customers, ask customers, how did you find me? You know, you could add a process mm. to your business where you sign up a new customer and as part of the onboarding process, it's, hi, Dave from this big company or this small company. Mm. First question, how did you find us? You know, we always do, I always do this yeah. now when speaking to people because it's really interesting. Like, like even the, a guy the other day called and he, um, I had a really good call with him and he was like, oh, I, I just Googled um, Kent agent, Kent social media expert or something mm. and we we came up so it's just and dan's face was there oh <laughs> i'm dan <Nelson. laughs> yeah um so yeah it's that it's those three pillars Where, who your audience what skills do you have mm. um and what resources do you have to invest i also think um so that will lead you to trying oh. certain things and i think testing these things so you're not going to know exactly what's going to work so say you you go through all the stuff dan said and you think I actually think um, learning a bit more on how to run ads on Instagram and to get to my audience might could be help. a really good way to market my business. But you don't know. But you don't know yet. I think it's actually doing that, deciding I'm going to invest this much time, this much money in this, something that seems sensible with mm. the research you do, um, and see what results I get. See what sticks. Um, and then looking at analysing that database. And you might try three or four things 
compare the results of those four things. Oh, what's what's got me the most awareness? What's got me through to the most eyeballs that are interested in my product? And actually, has anything got any sales yet? And if mm. it has, brilliant. What is it? Um, and for example, this podcast is for us one of those tests. So we're on episode seven, um, and we're going to be doing this. We're, we're definitely going to be doing this for six to twelve months. Um, partly because we enjoy it but yeah. partly um because that's how long we want to test this for but we we think that people in marketing roles in businesses that we would want to work with yeah. or b- owners of small businesses are going to be listening to this podcast we're potentially going to get in front of them potentially when we talk about oh, um Oh the, well, the listeners don't know. But oh, the, sorry, the, the, the TV. Uh, I was just just talking about really good stuff, and Dan's just. Oh, sorry. The, let the listeners know that a TV behind us has turned off. Anyway, it's back on now. Carry on. Um, yeah, so the the people we want to get in front of could be listening to this, um, become aware of us, and then when we're talking about really good stuff like this and showing we know what we're talking about, mm. they could be thinking, "Oh, these guys actually it might be worth talking to mm. about this project that's coming yeah. up." Um, Although we don't actually know what we're talking about, we're just making up as we go along. But yeah, obviously. So none of this is going to work. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this this is one of those tests for us, um, and we, we're constantly. And I think that's the point. It's not like you're going to work out. Oh right, Facebook ads uh, work for me. Yeah, that's uh, it. That's my business sorted. Mm. Uh, I'll just get someone on that, and in yeah. twenty years I'll retire. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've got to be constantly testing new things working out mm. what's working what's not working and improving it yeah um and i also think if you're thinking well we don't have a marketing budget we can't afford that or um my, my business doesn't really do marketing because we haven't you know haven't got that budget if if your marketing isn't providing you with more income than you're spending on it it's not working <laughs> that's so patronizing <laughs> no, but that's, that's the point isn't it no no, no. <laughs> people go oh we can't afford that if marketing is a cost like you need to change what you're doing yeah. because it's not working because the whole point is the whole point of marketing is you to invest money to generate more business more money back yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's a really good point if you're listening now and, and your mindset is oh marketing that's just another cost and you're like literally person listening now you yeah you're listening yeah. now yeah think about if you work for a business what do you currently do? What marketing activities do you currently do? And what is the return on investment? And if you're, if you're saying, don't know, don't know what the return on investment is, then that's really bad. You need to be figuring out what you're putting in and what you're getting back. Because just doing mm. stuff and thinking, oh yeah, it's all working towards us getting more business, but not knowing. I think we're all guilty of it. I think we're still guilty in some areas of we're investing in some things. And if you ask, us some of the small areas we're investing in what exactly is the return mm. we'd probably say oh uh, no good stuff i think that's the sort of thing you need to look at it and think hang on is this sensible for me to spend marketing budget in this place yeah um you know yeah <laughs> for those that didn't listen to the previous was it the previous episode yeah i just kept saying talking loads and then lloyd's response in the podcast was just yeah <laughs> yeah and it made an excellent episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to move on quickly, Dan, to, uh, to reveal a drink. Uh, I was going to do this earlier in the episode. We normally do, but um, we... It doesn't work. different. Uh, oh, got, what got a nice. choice, Dan. So we've got pomegranate green tea yeah. or blueberry white tea. What do you like to choose? I'd prefer the blueberry white tea, but... Okay. Thank you. So normally, you. Dan, when we introduce the drink for the episode... Um, just pick something out of our drinks fridge at, fridge at work because he, he just invests no time in this and, and I do all the preparation. But this time, I invested so much effort into this. You got so Lauren to do it. Lauren this morning brought these drinks in and then I... Thanks, Lauren. I took them from Ooh. the fridge where she put them. So. That is lovely. Pomegranate... I've, I've got a pomegranate green tea. See, this, this tastes too good to be healthy. Oh, yeah, this is very sweet. Yeah. Um, no artificial preservatives or colour. That's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Well done, so Lauren. So while, while you're enjoying uh, that great purchase from Lauren, um, last week we asked people to include the word vermin in their reviews. Um, but we, tr- we said the challenge was you've got to include the word vermin in your reviews and kind of 
hide the fact that we've asked you to, mm -hmm. so it's got to fit into the review. And we are absolutely bombarded <laughs> with reviews, including Vermin. And I'm uh, so many we've been looking through, but I'm just going to read one. <laughs> um, the one person that actually did it, Amy Nolan. What? <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to read the best one. Okay, go um, on. So, uh, business anchors, top business bants. Just so funny and a refreshing take on everything we all want to say, but don't always have anyone to say it to if we're working on our own. Sorry about not being able to read your <laughs> Why are you your reading review? like a robot? I got so engrossed eating lunch at my desk that the crumbs I spat out from laughing so hard could have left me vulnerable to an influx of vermin. <laughs> Luckily, I have a dog who I'm hoping will keep my neighbourhood rats at bay. My new weekly favourite podcast, Snort Out Loud Awesome, but maybe don't eat whilst listening. Brilliant. That was a lovely review. And I think... Amy Nolan, thank you very much. Did exactly what we asked for. Um, Are you not going to read any more of the reviews? Uh, no, I think that was the best one that <laughs> okay. we got. <laughs> okay. uh, so I'll just keep it to, the, to reading that best one that has yeah. Vermin in. Yeah. I think um, seeing as uh, having a beached whale winning us so much business, and I was talking about that, if, if, you're, if you think you can do better than that one, um, and you, you know, we might read out the top one again uh, <laughs> next week. If you can review us on Apple with the word whale, but mm. like we said, you've you've got to do it so people wouldn't know we've asked you to. Mm -hmm. Be creative, um, and we may read out the the one or two uh, <laughs> best ones next week. We'll see. Um, but I think Dan, have you got anything more to say on this marketing part? Um, no, just, just do loads of good marketing. I think. <laughs> that say? Such good work. Just do good, do good marketing stuff. No, I think I guess another something to add a bit more value is we constantly create content across our socials that um shares insightful stuff and teaches you how to do stuff, marketing <laughs> tactics and strategies. So yeah, have a look at that. Um and do it all basically. Just do just do marketing. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> cool. Well, in part two, we're going to be talking about sales and how some pretty simple changes took us from not winning much business to winning almost all of the business we've pitched for in the last six months, which is always good when you're a business. Yeah. Winning the business that you're trying to win. How many times can you say business in a sentence? I don't know. It's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, see you in part two for more dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs>